morning. Everybody that came, when you came in, you should have been given a program. We played that program on a couple of things I want you to be aware of. First off, I'd like you to pick up your pick card. It takes a second to fill that out. Put it back. There's a place for next steps and a place for prayer and praise requests. We'd love to come alongside you this week and pray for things that are going on in your life. So if you could write that down, put that on there. And also in here is this envelope. If you come prepared this morning, you an offering as part of your worship. You can use this envelope. And inside the envelope are multiple ways to give. At the end of the service, take both your pick card and the envelope and put it in a wooden box out on the balcony. Online, if we have audio and it's working, <laughs> it's great to have you here. Uh, if you haven't yet, comment down below. Let us know that you're here. If uh, you would like to send in a prayer or praise request, you can send those to info at theascentcc.com, and that comes directly to my email, and it's private. And I'd love to come alongside you and pray for what's going on in your life. Um, if you Site, there is a link to register for our kids club that's coming up the end of this month. Um, if you or have kids or your grandkids that want to be a part of that, there's a place you can go to register. There's also a video you can watch to kind of see what they're talking about this year. And uh, also, the end of this month, on the 25th, we have fireworks coming in. We need volunteers for that. You can see in our program that what time and day that'll be. And next week, people working in the Christmas story space. We are starting a new series today. So let's pray and we will dive right in. Jesus, I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you for this time that we can get together, be with those who are traveling, be with those who are sick. Lord, I just touch them and heal them, Lord, and take care of them and keep the people that are traveling safe. Be with uh, each and every one of us. Lord, here in an online, Lord, just help us to put the distractions of this week behind us and allow our minds to focus on you this morning as we as we begin <coughs> so <coughs> as i've said before some people really like these intro sermons and some people really don't so john you can you can take a nap now if you'd like <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're starting a new series today, and we're going to be talking about um, the Sermon on the Mount. And this is in Matthew uh, 5 through 7, and we're going to be there for a little while. And today, we just want to I just want to talk about an intro, about uh, kind of where we're going, what we're doing, and just kind of get a feeling for the Sermon on the Mount. All right? Um so, as an introduction, this is a sermon from Jesus. He is teaching. He, he comes into the Galilee area, and he sees a, this crowd gathers. So he goes up on this mountain, and he's, and I say mountain. We have a different definition of mountain here than what they have back there. Because it's not like he went up on the top of Mount Hood and started uh, speaking to the crowd. Yeah, he, he well... He may not have got cold. He's Jesus. I mean, he could have kept himself warm. But um, mm -hmm. when we talk about this Sermon on the Mount, I just kind of want to paint a picture of where Jesus is at. He's, he's on the Sea of Galilee, and this mount is probably overlooking the sea, and it's not like a huge mountain. It's just, it kind of becomes this giant amphitheater would be a better way to describe it, I believe. And... 
So when uh, he's, he's, he goes up there and he sits down and he addresses this crowd. And, he's, and this is one of the longest teachings that, G, that we have recorded in the Bible. Not that it's the longest teaching of Jesus, but it's one of the longest that we have recorded. And it's one of the most well-known sermons that Jesus taught. All right. And when we start looking into it, I think that there might be, this might be the most well known, and it might be the most misunderstood at times. So we're going to dig into that, and uh, we're going to be here for a little while and just kind of talking about Jesus and his teaching. So when you read through the, uh, the New Testament and you see all those red words, yeah, we're in the red word section now. So. Um, I am excited to get into the into this. I've been reading quite a few books and, and commentaries, and uh, so the Sermon on the Mount takes about three chapters or so, five, about three chapters, and one of the commentaries is over 600 pages, so there's a lot to unpack, and some things I agree with the commentators on, some things I won't. You'll see a comment in here today, and... I'll let you decide. All right. So <clears throat> here we are, Matthew 5, 1, 2. That's, our, that's where we're at today. Seeing the crowds, he went on upon the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. And I want to give you kind of the highlights of, of this, of what he sat down and talked. So we have the Beatitudes that he begins with. Blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Um, we have the Lord's Prayer in here, right? For um, Hallowed be thy name. And we got various teachings. We have, uh, he talks about being salt and light to the world. Um, ask, seek, and knock. He talks about that. And the golden rule, have you ever heard of the golden rule? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk about the golden rule and maybe the silver rule. Have you ever heard of the silver rule? Yeah, it's interesting. We'll get to that. That's something that we went over in Bible college, and I'm going, oh, all right, I've never heard of that. Uh, the narrow gate, build your house upon the rock, an eye for an eye, and don't worry. And every time I hear that, yes. don't worry. Be ha That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Jesus phrase there, not the, yeah. not the other one. And in a nutshell, um, the, this is this Sermon on the Mount is how we live a life that is, number one, completely dedicated to God, all right? And number two, entirely pleasing to God, <coughs> free of hus his, say it, hypocrisy. hypocrisy. I was getting the P and the S backwards. I wasn't able to fix it. Uh, full of grace and love, and abounding in wisdom and discernment. Praise God for that, right? So, when we start talking about this Sermon on the Mount, we have to ask ourselves, is this important? Why should we even study it? All right, because this, this was a sermon that Jesus preached over 2,000 years ago. Is it really important to us today? Is it relevant to us today? And here are some of the reasons that it is important to us. It's important because it's the greatest message ever given. And this is by Jesus, our, our Lord and Savior. It's the most well-known but least understood of Jesus' teachings. It's the source of countless writings and teachings. People, I know um, one, a friend of mine was talking about his church back at, in Pennsylvania, I think. And... Uh, he said he has gone through the Sermon of the Mount with his pastor when he was back there so many times because he would be teaching in something and then he would refer back to the Sermon on the Mount and he must, he said, I must have gone through the Sermon on the Mount 50 times in the last three years because we kept going back, going through other teachings in the Bible. Um, number four, it is best summarized by one verse. Do not be like them. Do not be like them. Don't be like the world. We are to be a different from the world. 
and it demands we live a countercultural life. And I think that uh, I think that's very prevalent for today. Is it demands that we live a countercultural life where we don't we aren't like the world. We live like a child of God. And number six, it describes entry into a now and not yet kingdom. Okay, this is talking about the kingdom of heaven that is now, but yet not yet. So we will, we will be digging into that a little bit, and it's important for us to realize that the kingdom of heaven is now, but yet not quite yet. And that will be an interesting, I'm looking forward to that session. And it sets up the kingdom values that ensure that Jesus is king of our lives. When we start looking at this Sermon on the Mount and we start seeing this is the character that Jesus wants us to be, it sets us up for um, becoming more like him and becoming and developing our lives into his character. And um, it sets us up for what I call kingdom living. Is it relevant? Is it relevant for our life today? Does it have any meaning for us today? Um, this is an outline adapted from uh, John Stott, which I really like his stuff. I read him a lot. Um, it teaches about Christian character. It demonstrates the Christian's influence. It, it promotes the Christian's righteousness. It calls attention to the Christian's piety. It cautions against Christian's ambition. It outlines Christian's relationship, and it demands Christian's commitment. So um, a Christian's character. So the, it starts out with the Beatitudes. And it's a list of eight of the Christian characters, and then it lists divine blessings that are available to those who practice them. So as we teach, we work through that, we're going to see kind of the character and, and how we are to live. <clears throat> a Christian's influence, Jesus is uses this metaphor of salt and light. And on a hill to demonstrate how we are to make an impact for good. So salt, and it talks about if, a, if salt loses its saltiness, how, what good is it? And then we are to be the light to the world. And we can only be a light to the world if we have the light of the world in us. So that's important, and we're going we're gonna to be talking through that. So um, a Christian's righteousness. Uh, Jesus gives us six illustrations about how to live. He's going to talk to us about anger and murder, uh, lust and adultery, and he's going to talk to us about marriage and divorce, swearing and retaliation, and revenge versus love. And these are all good things that we need to kind of learn and to live by. And in all of this, Jesus is trying to help develop us into his character. He's trying to help us mold ourselves into being like Jesus. So when we talk about becoming or being more like Jesus together, this is what we're talking about is we are talking about these characteristics of Jesus and he's trying to mold us into the person that he wants us to be. And when we are working through this and we are letting this overflow out of our lives, that's how we are becoming more like Jesus. We are becoming more like Jesus through our character being more like his character. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Christian's piety specifically addressing being a hypocrite, saying one thing and doing another. So we're going we're gonna to dig into that a little bit. And then this Christian ambition. Our faith should change our attitude towards material possessions, wealth, power, and even leadership. <coughs> our faith should... Um, prompt us on our attitudes towards what we buy, how we purchase, how we spend our money, how we develop our wealth and our power, and, and how we view leadership. And I'm not talking about um, you sitting out there and viewing church leadership or you sitting out there and viewing the government. I'm talking about how we view leadership in your own life. Granted, Viewing leadership on the outside, that, that is part of it, but you are all leaders of one, um, some, some way, shape, or form of your life. You're a leader. So this Christian ambition will show us 
how to be a good leader and and have good wealth, honest wealth, um, and in Christian relationships. In Jesus Christ, old relationships are changed and new ones are created. Unity, restoration, healing, and forgiveness are all available. And that's how we should be living our life, right? And, and not holding on to the, uh, the anger and wanting revenge. We are to be forgiving and that allows healing. So a Christian's commitment... It's not enough simply to call Jesus Lord, but we must live for him with our whole being. So we can, we call, when we are saved, we come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, I want you to be the king. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want to follow you. And that's all great. But if there's no heart change, there's an issue. When you say, I want Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life, there is a heart change, and we best begin to live for him. So, with all of this said, is it really practical? Is this sermon practical? Can we achieve its standards? That's a tough question, I think. Can we achieve its standards? Because this is Jesus talking. This is the Lord, the creator of the universe. He is the one talking, and he is the one teaching. And I guess our question is, can we really live up to what Jesus is saying? Um, one commentator says, The Sermon on the Mount is of no practical value to either individuals or communities because it holds forth an impossible dream that can never come true. All right. Notice I said one commentator. And I think that, and I'm afraid that there are more people than just as one commentator that feel this way. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the Sermon on the Mount um, explaining us how to live. But I think that it is achievable and attainable. All right, and Tolstoy says, not beautiful abstract thoughts presented for the most part exaggerated and impossible demands, but this is simple, clear, practical commandments, which if obeyed, and this is quite feasible, would establish a completely new order of human society in which violence would not only cease of itself, but the greatest blessing of man can be hoped for, the kingdom of heaven on earth, and would be attained. I agree with that one. Yes. Matthew 6.33, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That's where we're at. That's what we're seeking, is we are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We can't attain any of this on our own, but we can attain it through Jesus Christ and being in his kingdom. Amen? And then Jesus finished saying these sayings. The crowds were astonished at his teachings, for he was teaching them as someone who had authority and not as their scribes. And my challenge for us is, may we be astonished at Christ's teachings and follow the principles that he taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Now, as we go through here, we're going we're gonna to talk about some, some difficult things that I think that we will all have to, to deal with. I don't know where you're at in your life, but I think that somewhere in this Sermon on the Mount, it's going to touch on our life. And it might be a point of Jesus might be stepping on our toes a little bit somewhere in here. Or it might be that <clears throat> this is very relevant in my life. And I can see how Jesus is speaking to me. And the Holy Spirit, I pray, is going to work on all of us through this. Um, we're going to be in, in this sermon series for a long time. I'll warn you now, I think it's 38 weeks. 
on three chapters. So um, we're gonna we're gonna dig in and we're gonna talk about it. And I think that when we talk about becoming more like Jesus together, I think that this is the perfect series to kind of get everybody focused back on that because Jesus is going to show us what he expects and he's going to show us his character right here in this sermon. And I think that that is going to really help us fill our lives and lift our lives up and encourage us to become more and more like Jesus. So this picture, Sermon on the Mount, I don't know. I mean, we have the on the mountain. I, I specifically didn't put the Sea of Galilee picture behind this because I was thinking that if we, if Jesus was here today and he came to Prineville and he went up onto a mountain to teach, what it, will it look like? And I think it would look more like this picture than it would looking at the Sea of Galilee. So I, I really, my prayer is that this Sermon on the Mount series is going to really open our eyes to how practical this sermon is and how practical um, these teachings are to our lives today right here in Prineville and in our spiritual walk with Jesus each and every day. I am excited about this series and I hope that uh, you are too and I hope that I can digest everything down into uh, bite-sized portions because as I said the the one book that I'm reading is I think it's 500 and some pages and we've I've got two other commentaries that I'm going through so um, I hope that we can we can boil it all down and we can find some interesting nuggets that will really affect our lives and uh, this will be hugely beneficial to us Will you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you for this time we can come together and, and begin this series on the Sermon on the Mount, Lord. And, and we want to dedicate this series to you. We want to um, learn from your teachings and let them be a part of our life, uh, be a, an integral part of our heart, that we might become more like your character So that when we come into situations that you will be the one overflowing and not us. We thank you for that and we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. We come to our time of communion this morning. We have communion on each side of the, of the chapel here. And as this song plays, I pray that as you feel led, that you will go to the table and take communion. And, and as we... As we take communion today, it just kind of reflect on maybe being there at that Sermon on the Mount, sitting there listening to Jesus and his teaching and focusing on who Jesus is this morning. And as we take the bread that represents his body and we take the juice that represents his blood that ushers in this new covenant that we can have this relationship with God just kind of think through that and, and put yourself in the position of sitting at our Lord and Savior's feet and listening to him. Jesus, as we come before you this morning, we want to remember you. We remember what you did for us on that cross. We remember the love and the mercy and the grace that you have for us. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As the